So the Washington Wizards are sending away two of the most coveted players in the NBA. Ishmith! Ishmael Smith! And KCP. And they're returning Monte Morris and Will Barton. Now in all seriousness, I've always liked KCP. You know, anyone that plays with LeBron gets hate because the LeBron fanboys will blame anybody but Bron when things don't go perfect and he fits in that category. But I've always liked KCP. His three-point shooting numbers are a little bit lower than what he actually is capable of because he takes some bad shots, but he's a very capable three-point shooter, was a starter on a championship team, plays some pretty good D. Ish Smith, when it comes to him, I don't even understand how he was signed to a multi-year deal. I like him, I respect him, but like... He's the type of dude you keep signing to one-year deals based on what your team needs for the year. Like, I I, I don't know. I, I looked it up. He got signed by the Hornets to a multi-year deal, which is kind of crazy to me. But shout out to him. So he has one year left on his deal. So does KCP. They're sending him out of town. And they're bringing in Monte Morris, who has two years left on his deal. And Will the Thrill, who has one. And this trade for the Wizards. For the Nuggets. I think it's just... A cap space situation because Monte Morris has two years left on his deal about at about eight million and at about nine million. And um the other guy that they are sending away, Will Barton, just has one year left on the deal and it's about paid as much as KCP. So really the cap space difference comes from uh Monte Morris who has like eight and then nine million for Ish Smith who has four million. So you're generating more cap space if the if you're the Nuggets, but I'm confused, like what are you gonna do with it? Because Monte Morris has been one of your more consistent players over the last couple of years. He's been arguably the best backup point guard in the league. One of the best when he's when he is a backup. So I don't understand like having him on eight nine million is a big, big time bargain. So I don't really understand what the Nuggets are trying to do here. And even me being someone that likes KCP, I don't think he's much better than Will Barton. I think if everybody's healthy for the Nuggets, KCP is a better fit because he's more of an off ball type player. But I think Will Barton's better. Which, maybe Nuggets fans disagree because I actually was going on, I think it was on Twitter, and I saw Nuggets fans talking about, how oh, we have to get rid of Will Barton. Will Barton's trash. Or maybe it was their Instagram when they drafted somebody. There were people in the comments like, now get rid of Will Barton. So, I guess maybe the Nuggets were just determined to get rid of him, which I don't understand. I thought, I, I don't watch every Nuggets game, but I felt like he was pretty good for that. For the Wizards now, what does this do for them? You get younger with Monte Morris. He's, I think, 25, 26. Like, he's a young, solid point guard. And then Will Barton, you get a higher level player when he's ISO. But, like, I don't think he should be really a part of, like, any big play. It's just, you know, solid player to have coming off the bench. But my play moving forward for the Wizards, you got to trade Brad Beal. I'm sorry. They have a team full of solid young pieces, the Wizards do. But to go anywhere in today's NBA, you can't have a bunch of solid pieces and one borderline all-star in Bradley Beal. I'm sorry. This team with Bradley Beal, at best, can get into the playoffs, but I'm highly unlikely. And you don't want to do what the Knicks are doing and just overpay like, like guys like Brunson. He's a lot better than Brunson. But I'm saying like going all in on a team that doesn't have a chance to go anywhere. And for Bradley Beal, he's up for like a $250 million deal. The minute you sign him to that deal, he becomes dang near untradeable. And if you are able to trade him, it'll be getting like a Westbrook in return. Or like a John Wall back on when he had that contract. Like somebody that, uh, on a contract that another team doesn't want. It's smart to get off of it now while there are teams that are desperate to get a star player in a sign and trade type situation. Like if you could get, talk to the Trailblazers and say, Hey, uh, you got Damian Lillard. He's kind of desperate to start winning. What if we could take Simons off of your hands? Throw in Nasir Little and let's call it a day. Or Shaden Sharp and Simons and let's call it a day. I think that's a better future for the, for the Wizards because the only chance of you going anywhere right now is you need to get a superstar with these other young guys. Because none of these stars, I mean, none of these younger players that you've drafted look like they're going to be a star. They all look like decent picks. Rui Hachimura, Danny Avdia, even Kisper with his shooting. Like, they all look like they have a little bit something to their game. It's just none of them look like stars. So I think with Monte Morris, it's another solid piece. 
but you need to keep taking the swings at the bat to try and find a superstar to make it come together. Because if you don't do that, a bunch of solid players, and one even, if you want to call him a bona fide all-star, it's still not doing it in today's NBA. So either you have to look to package up these young guys to bring in a star with Bradley Beal, but I don't know if you even have the value to do that. So if you can't do that, I would say ship out Bradley Beal because even if you were able to do it, $250 million for Bradley Beal, I just don't think that type of contract is making our own championship team. But let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment, hit that like, and then subscribe. Please? Yes, sir. Maybe the Nuggets making a move? What do y'all think the Nuggets about to do?